this is the new Peugeot 308. Now, let's just jump straight into talking about how bloody good it looks. I mean, Peugeot has got a good track record of late for producing great looking everyday cars, but I think they've really nailed it with this one. And although this shares a similar bone structure to the Vauxhall Astra and DS4, due to using the same EMP2 platform, I think the 308 is the best looking of the lot. And Peugeot has even given this new 308 the new Peugeot badge called the Lion Shield. And I'll save you a lot of um and ah and now and tell you right away what it reminds you of. The Proton Badge. I mean, can we get them up side by side? Pretty bang on, really. They could have at least given the lion a moustache or something. Anyway, let's get inside and see what the new 308 is like. That ruined the flow of it, didn't it? Well... How nice is it in here? I mean, let's be honest, a lot of people, me included, are probably sick of hearing about how the very conservative Golf is the standard for quality and it makes up for its lack of flair with quality and all that. But I tell you what, this interior is proof that ultra modern can work very well indeed. I mean, just look at it. I'm a particular fan of this fabric wrap around here. And there's a little bit of ambient light in here as well. And I love this, this elongated vent design. I also like the fact that this big patch here is just kind of allowed to breathe. <laughs> uh, they haven't tried to throw any any sort of extra swanky bits of detail in there. They just let it be blank and it just looks really nice. I even like the way they've incorporated it into the screen here. Yeah, lovely. And I'll be honest, when I first saw this interior and having this screen and the little touch screen panel underneath, I was a little bit apprehensive that they'd over-engineered it, but I think this really works. I mean, the fact that there's no climate control buttons, they are in the screen, which is always a pet peeve of mine, but with the climate button there, bam, you've got access to it. Yeah, it works really well. I mean, even, even the sound, I mean, it sounds great. It sounds really upmarket. I mean, this interior is a bit Lexus, it's a bit Mercedes, it's a bit Audi. I think it looks spot on. And this 10 inch touchscreen is nice and responsive too. And it sits nicely alongside the digital instrument cluster, which looks great when displaying everything from fuel economy to sat nav. We do have to talk about the steering wheel though. Now it is a pet peeve for a lot of people in modern Peugeots because again, it's of the shrunken variety and you are forced to look over the steering wheel to see the speedometer. Now, whether this works for you or not will depend on your size. So it's definitely worth trying it out, but I'm a short guy around 5'8". And to be honest, it works perfectly for me. Um, I have struggled in other modern Peugeots, but in the 308, spot on. Now onto kit, which is great all round in the 308. A few highlights on our Allure Premium model include sat-nav, a top-notch reversing camera, which looks really clear, a bunch of driver assist features, wireless phone charging, and Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, although it can feel a little bit cramped in here, uh, I've got to admit, because, you know, the driving position is quite snug. It's quite practical, surprisingly. I mean, you've got good sized door bins. You've got a cubby under here, cubby on top of here where you can put your wallet and your keys and things like that. You've got two decent sized cup holders with a little slidey thing there to hide them. Uh, you've also got a cubby here and a massive uh, storage compartment under the armrest. You can feel I'm fit a massive bottle in there, no problem. Unfortunately, you do have a rubbish glove box again. Oh no, wait. No, you don't. Peugeot's finally sorted that out. There's no fuse box impeding the glove box space. You've got loads of space there. And yeah, really practical cabin. Oh, and one other thing, and it is a very little thing. You can hold the audio down button on the steering wheel and mute the audio. Now you'd be surprised at the amount of cars that don't have a mute button for the music and the radio, and it does my head in. So yeah, that, that's only a small thing, but very good. I can't really think of anything negative to say about the interior, to be honest. I really like it. Oh, do you know what? One thing I actually noticed this morning with very bright sunlight, these uh, gear selector buttons for the park, reverse and drive can be a bit difficult to see. And you might find yourself sort of blocking the sun to see them. But I mean, that is only a little thing, just something I noticed this morning. Now, looking at the 308 from the outside, you might expect the doors to be quite narrow because it's quite a sleek car. But honestly, they're not. I mean, climbing in, very easy to do. There you go. But I've got to admit, once you're back here, it is quite dark and dingy. Maybe because you've got these jet black seats and although the windows are quite big, they are tinted. So yeah, it is, it is a little bit dark back here. Um, but overall, I mean, space again, for me, I'm around five foot eight. When this seat is set up for me, leg room is pretty good, but on par with some of the best hatchbacks. But if this is set up for a six footer, 
it's probably going to be around super mini sized amounts of leg room you know and uh, same goes for headroom to be honest okay for me it's a few inches there but if you're six foot you might struggle a little bit there's a few other little niggles back here as well i mean although the the door bins are mathematically quite big getting access to them because these armrests can be quite difficult and if you are sat in the middle you're probably going to struggle for elbow space uh, when sat with two either side here however you do get a fold down armrest with two cup holders and a little bit of storage you also get a little cubby down here and you get two usb charging ports the boot release is here on the boot by the way not down there which is a bit different also stops your hands from getting dirty now with all the seats in place you have 412 litres of boot space to play around with which is really big for a hatchback although you do get a bit of a load lip here and the opening is a little bit narrow uh, it's by no means the end of the world it is still a very practical boot now those seats do fold down although they don't fold down completely flat you do get a bit of a hump but they very rarely fold down completely flat in any hatchback to be honest you also get a ski hatch here for loading longer objects which is a really nice option so yeah overall the boots no great shakes but you do have quite a lot of storage space now it is worth noting however that if you go for one of the 308 hybrids you do lose 50 liters of this boot space and speaking of hybrids let's talk about what is under the 308 bonnet well it isn't a hybrid engine at least not in this car anyway although you can get 308 hybrids which offer up to 37 miles of all electric driving so definitely keep that in mind you can even get a diesel 308 although we haven't got that either today we've got the three cylinder 1.2 litre PureTech turbo petrol which has 130 horsepower now when it comes to three cylinder 1.2 litres they can sound a little bit rubbish i mean they can sound like a crap moped engine let's be honest but this 1.2 litre three cylinder doesn't i mean actually if you put your foot down i think it sounds pretty sporty i mean it sounds a little bit like a flat four boxer engine albeit on a budget but you know what <laughs> it's not all fart and no poo i mean this 1.2 litre is a cracking little engine there's plenty of pull low down and uh yeah it's a really good performer in fact i'd go as far as saying it's probably the best 1.2 litre three cylinder I've driven and i've driven loads can't really think of a better one to be honest and a big part of this 1.2 litre being such a good engine is the fact that it's mated to the eat8 automatic gearbox now i've driven this in a ton of other cars and it just does what it's supposed to it's a great automatic it changes up when it's supposed to it holds onto gears and holds onto the revs when it's supposed to it is a really good gearbox now uh, with this 1.2 liter and this gearbox combination you shouldn't have any problem getting at least 45 miles per gallon if not a little bit more if you drive more conservatively uh, now if you're a company car driver with this 1.2 liter you're looking at a bak tax bracket of 30 percent for 2022 and 2023 now i'm not sure if it's the gearbox or the brakes let me just slow down and come to a stop now i don't know if it's the gearbox or the brakes but you do get a bit of a a bit of a jolt uh, when coming to a complete stop and it's a bit jarring to be honest like i say i'm not quite sure why that is but you know it does take a bit of getting used to there it is again and do you know what it's slightly less of an issue but in terms of dial and power in the accelerator can be a bit jolty as well i've actually been experimenting with the drive mode so you've got normal mode you've got sport and you've got eco uh, the eco mode you can put in now helps smooth out some of the accelerator um stickiness or whatever you want to call it um by dampening the accelerator a bit the sport mode helps cut out any faff and just gives you the power straight away so that's definitely one way of you know changing that but to be honest i'm probably being a bit pedantic it's really not that bad i'm just being awkward i'll tell you what when you put it in sport mode you do get a noticeable amount of poke i mean the revs are very very happy to bounce up and you get some nice red dials and red ambient lighting as well which is very gti very cool so what's the 308 actually like to drive though? Well, Peugeot has managed to make the steering light and responsive. It's made the ride comfortable, and it's also made it quite 
fun to drive as well. Now, usually when you hear that a car, you know, all the stars have aligned and a car offers a bit of everything, it does sway one way more than the other a little bit. But honestly, Peugeot has hit that versatility right down the middle brilliantly. I mean, you can drive the 308 however you want and it will happily oblige. I mean, you can drive it fast on a country lane like this and have fun. Uh, and yet you can drive it slowly, you know, on the school run and it will be a very comfortable little run around. I mean, the, the, the tuning of the steering in particular is really impressive. I mean, it's not dead off centre. You can feel, you know, a little bit of responsiveness when you tweak the steering wheel. Yeah, when you go like that, you know, the car's not jumping all over the, you know, all over the place like a hyper responsive sports car. And insulation's pretty impressive as well. I mean, okay, you do get, you do get a bit of tyre raw um, at motorway speeds and the sound of that three cylinder can bubble over a little bit into the cabin um, especially again at motorway speeds but you know it's certainly not off-putting I'm just gonna uh, stay in sport mode put my foot down a little bit <laughs> i tell you what with the way the new 308 looks and the you know the new swanky badge which people might not recognize uh, combined with the the bubbly sound, the flat four-esque sound of this three-cylinder. If you're after a car that looks the part and sounds the part and, you know, is affordable, definitely look at the 308 in this 1.2 litre. Change. Oh. <laughs> what a difference a good auto box makes. So, there you go. In my opinion, the new 308 is a pretty solid all-rounder. And it looks great as well. But you know what? Over the last few years, Peugeot has been taking the competition to its German rivals with particular aplomb. And it all kind of started when the 3008 and the 5008 started bossing it in the SUV segment. And it's nice to see that that balance finesse, upmarket appeal, whatever you want to call it, has successfully seeped through to its smaller family cars. And you know what? It's making them pretty hard not to want. 